Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Wi-Fi battle. Today's match is extremely weird and also really close and just kind of... I, I, you're gonna have to see. Anyway, I've got my team full of randos, whereas my opponent actually has kind of an interesting squad as well. There's a couple Pokemon you don't see very often, uh, but there is some pretty large threats over there. So I decide to lead off with Jinx just because I know I can likely put something to sleep early. You already know what the homegirl does and let's get into it. So. They decide to lead off with the Emo Bird Staraptor, as Frostitude has an interesting matchup here. Now, rocking the sick haircut over there, Jinx is a little bit shy, and I'm thinking I probably should try to conserve my Jinx and maintain its Focus Sash. Uh, there's a couple Pokemon where Jinx would be really useful for, like the Salamence, there's uh, things like a Drift Blim, and I decide this thing's probably just going to go for a U-turn. You generally see a Staraptor just go right for the Pivot, so I tossed out the Pink Boy Paul, as it actually ends up going for a final Gambit. Uh, 10 out of 10 did not expect this thing just kamikaze itself and it knocks Paul into red, which is actually wildly unfortunate as well. Uh, that was kind of just a tough turn for me. Nothing really wanted to deal with Staraptor. And now Slowbro is looking like it's real kind of uh, easy to pick off and not really worth keeping around. Overall, just threw me a curveball. And this leaves me with a couple different options. Either I stay in, let Slowbro go down to... Uh, the Roserade and then I can get a free switch or I switch out get my rare generator and try to save Paul for later However, literally nothing on my team wants to switch into this Roserade. So I decided to stay in Unfortunately, Paul goes down early and now I get a free switch into whatever I'd like uh, However, I really just don't have any switches into this Roserade My only answer would be to go into Shaman But as you saw there they have the sludge bomb and Shaman obviously cannot take that so I bring in Jinx I outspeed everything's going smoothly and then I got some shit in my eye and apparently missed the <laughs> the lovely kiss, which actually really sucks because now this thing throws a shadow ball at me and uh, I'm like, fuck it, two times, second time's the charm and I'm actually able to lay down the smooch, put that thing to sleep and hopefully uh, be able to force a switch here. But unfortunate that Jinx missed that turn just because now my focus sash is broken. Um, I was really excited about them not having hazards up and now, you know, Shink, uh, Jinx is going to have to deal with not having that cushion of that that focus sash so that really does kind of suck but i mean that's the name of the game when you're you're using lovely kiss so i go for the ice beam here on the switch they decide to go into the x plowed and that does just over half which is amazing because i know i outspeed obviously my dude with the hollowed out kneecaps is about slow as hell um but it actually goes for an endure so did not see that coming as well i go for the ice beam this thing knocks it to of course one hp it endures the hit and it reveals that it is Salic Berry. So I'm actually not even sure what speed tier this puts this thing in, depending on if it's like a plus speed nature, maxed out speed investment, plus the Salic, it will outspeed. Um, but this thing hits so damn hard. Honestly, x Bob would be like A tier if it wasn't so damn slow. So that's one way of getting around it. It goes for the boom burst, yells at Frostitute. And I figured since I lost my focus sash, there's not really a switch that I can do here. And unfortunately, uh, the Jinx does go down. So kind of in a little bit of a pickle here as my dude's got some interesting movesets. And honestly, you love to see it. I, I like to see the, the diversity. But luckily, I do have the priority with my Kabutops. I can bring in this thing, give him a nice free hug, slice his ass up. And that is going to take care of the x -Blood. But shout out to the, the Endure x -Blood. It's pretty cool. Um, I mean, shitty for me because I would have liked to keep Jinx around, but it is what it is. Um, and also now in comes the Roserade who uh, was actually Natural Cure, so he's not asleep anymore. And I keep finding myself in situations where I'm putting things to sleep that have Natural Cure. Looking back, I probably should have just Ice Beamed this thing with Jinx, but you know, it is what it is. And it seemed like the right move at the time, whatever. Um, I do know, however, that I can switch Shaman in here because he's definitely going to go for a Grass move. And I can switch this thing in freely, don't have to worry about the Sludge Bomb. And then I know I can likely outspeed and hit it with a Psychic with a Life Orb. It's going to be close to a one-hit KO. Um, I don't think it actually grabs the kill, but I am the luckiest Hell Salad in town. I'm able to get the critical hit, um, which I do believe that mattered. Um, I haven't calculated that out, but Life Orb Shaman with a non-stab Psychic, I think probably should have lived. But sometimes you roll the dice and you get lucky, and so, you know, I'll definitely take it. Anyway, they get a free switch into whatever they like. They decide to go into the Drift Blim. The team's looking a little bit crippled at this moment in time, and I don't really have anything to bring into this either. Honestly, this matchup is looking really tough for this team. Uh, so I decide to stay in, and if I've seen any Drift Blims before, generally they're going to be just an unburdened set with like a... 
a plus speed berry, substitute, things like that with a Will-O-Wisp. It actually turns out to be a Tailwind variant here, so it goes for that Tailwind. That's going to stick around for, I believe, four turns. That's going to make pretty much everything on their team faster. And, of course, it ends up outspeeding, straight up just blows itself up and goes for the explosion that will take care of Shaman. Uh, but that really does not matter. I'm, I'm kind of not worried about Shaman going down here because he has two Pokemon left, both of which I have an answer for. It's going to be the Honchkrow and the Salamence in the back. Now, I've been conserving my Metacham in the back pocket just because I know Choice Scarf Ice Punch can take care of likely both of those. So, uh, he actually ends up going Honchkrow here. I figure I might as well use the Golem. Um, it was a great switch in regardless of what he decided to go into. Um, unfortunately for me, it actually turns out to be Honchkrow. And the reason that's bad is because this thing doesn't really have the ability to knock me down to my sturdy or even low enough range for me to activate um, my berry. If you've seen this golem in previous battle videos, you know that it relies on its ability to live attacks with its sturdy or at least be knocked down uh, close to red and then get its custat berry to move first. So this thing surprisingly goes for a sky attack. It has, it has the herb, so it's able to go for it in one uh, turn there. With this thing behind the tailwind, actually a pretty interesting Honchkrow. Um, I get flinched the first turn and then I'm able to take the Night Slash, unfortunately not to the range where my berry is gonna help me out. So. Um, I do land the Stone Edge there that takes care of the Honchkrow, and now it's just me and the Salamence, so I'm honestly fine with this. I figure even though the Golem didn't work out, I got the Metacham in the back to just be able to punch that motherfucker with a fistful of ice, and I should be okay here. I'm thinking also, I'm going to try to explode just in case this thing wants to Dragon Dance, because the Dragon Dance would have been a good play, um, because I'm not able to take it out, and then that allows it to get close to being able to outspeed, so... Uh, unfortunately just goes for the earthquake there not able to explode on him as now it gets that moxie boost and my dude's over there just floating in the sky not even flapping his wings the fuck but I just decide to go right into Nippley and saving this thing for pretty much the entire match against the Salamence and all I gotta do is click ice punch I'm choice scarf I'm huge power it's all I gotta do nothing can go wrong except it all goes wrong because this turns out to be a choice scarf Salamence which is not a set that I've seen around for a very long time, but uh, kudos to my dude for rocking the Choice Scarf Mence. There's really, there's really no way you can prepare for that. When you see a Salamence, you're definitely not generally expecting Choice Scarf, but you know, sometimes, sometimes life gives you a Choice Scarf Mence, and you get your, you get stepped on by this fat ass dragon. So that is exactly what happens. All I have left is going to be the Kabutops, and he's able to grab the dub. So that was, it was a short match. It was just honestly a really interesting one. I thought it was just upload worthy because I had a good time, and I just got absolutely destroyed by the late game scarf, and sometimes that's how it be. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel, and I appreciate you guys. See ya.